I'm Abby. Today I'm going to share some of my tips with you for making sure that every time you use your overlocker you get great results. I like to make sure that I do things with good practice and I repeat the same thing every time. Important things like making sure I clean my machine, making sure I oil it every time so that the threads don't get muddled up easily. How to go around curves and inside curves and how to sew around the edge of your fabric so that your seams don't show on the inside and how to avoid that funny kink when you go round and you want to come off your fabric. So we'll go through those today. Let's get started. Once you've cleaned your machine and it's ready to go, what you need to do is thread up the machine and make sure you put the correct needles in for the project you're working on. And make sure you've used good threads in your machine and follow the thread map in the right order. When you're threading your machine, make sure your presser foot is lifted up so that the tension discs are open and allow the thread to feed through them properly. Always set your machine to factory settings. So you can see my tension dials have all been played with and I need to set them back up. Look for the box or a shaded colour or a bold colour. Stitch length is always inevitably on three. And differential feed is always on one, no matter which machine you have. And I'm going to set my knife midway so it's on five millimetre cut. You need to grab some of your scraps and these scraps will help you make any adjustments you need to to the machine before you work on your actual project. To make sure you get the correct differential feed, fabric needs to be going in a straight line. If it veers off to the left or to the right, your differential feed might need adjusting. So for example, if you see loops hanging over and you can tell that the upper looper is hanging over too far over to the back, you can tighten the upper looper up a little bit and you can adjust the knife so we're not cutting so much fabric off. We'll try again. And you can see you haven't got loops hanging over and the thread is sitting nicely on the edge of the fabric. Now I just want to check, I can't see my stitch, and I can, so I need to tighten the needle. Now that I've tightened the needle, let's have a look. We can still see a little bit more, so I'm going to go up one more notch. And that looks much better. I'm going to increase the stitch length so that the stitches aren't so close together. And there you 
you go. I've got to pull really hard to see those stitches. But otherwise, that's it. They're well hidden away in there. And if you want to, you can go even higher. Nothing to stop you going even up to seven. And there we go. Really cannot see those stitches now. Brilliant. When you're stitching curves, just match the pieces up. And I find it easier to hold the whole piece like this in one hand. And go around carefully. And when you're going around curves the other way, what you want to do is you want to try and straighten it without pulling your fabric because it will give you waved seams. It so all pleats up on this side. And if you want to meet your overlocker, and if you want to meet your overlocker stitching with this that you've stitched before, you want to lift your needles out and then chain off. So go over a few stitches, lift your needles out of the machine, lift up the oppressor foot and start pulling on your fabric as you chain away and then you don't get those funny shaped pointy curves like that. <laughs> 